Hello viewers. Today we are talking about Airbus A350. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, so let's go. The Airbus A350 is a long-range, wide-body airliner developed and produced by Airbus. The first A350 design proposed by Airbus in 2004, in response to the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, would have been a development of the A330 with composite wings and new engines. As market support was inadequate, in 2006, Airbus switched to a clean sheet, XWB, or extra wide body design, powered by Rolls-Royce Trent XWB turbofan engines. The prototype first flew on 14 June 2013 from Toulouse in France. Type certification from the European Aviation Safety Agency or ASA was obtained in September 2014, followed by a certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration or FAA two months later. The A350 is the first Airbus aircraft primarily made of carbon fiber reinforced polymer. It has a new fuselage designed around a 9 abreast economy cross-section, up from the 8 abreast A330, A340. It has a common type rating with the A330. The airliner has two variants. The A350-900 typically carries 300 to 350 passengers over a 15,000 km or 8,100 nautical mile range and has a 280 ton or 617,300 pound maximum takeoff weight or MTOW. The longer a 350-1000 accommodates 350 to 410 passengers and has a maximum capacity of 16,100 km or 8,700 nmi and a 319t or 703,200 pounds MTOW. On 15 January 2015, the initial A350-900 entered service with Qatar Airways, followed by the A350-1000 on the 24th of February 2018 with the same launch customer. Singapore Airlines is currently the largest operator, with 57 airplanes. As of January 2022, A350 orders stood at 915 aircraft, of which 465 had been delivered, and all were in service with 39 operators. The global A350 fleet had completed more than 720,000 flights on more than 800 routes without accidents. It succeeds the A340 and is positioned to compete against Boeing's large long-haul twinjets, the 787, then 777, and its successor, the 777X. Development of Airbus A350. Background and early designs. Airbus initially rejected Boeing's claim that the Boeing 787 Dreamliner would be a severe threat to the Airbus A330, stating that the 787 was just a reaction to the A330 and that no response was needed. When airlines urged Airbus to provide a competitor, Airbus initially proposed the A330-200 light, a derivative of the A330 featuring improved aerodynamics and engines similar to those on the 787. The company planned to announce this version at the 2004 Farnborough Airshow but not proceed. The initial A350 concept, based on the A330. On 16 September 2004, Airbus President and Chief Executive Officer Noel Forgeard confirmed the consideration of a new project during a private meeting with prospective customers. Forgeard did not give a project name or state whether it would be an entirely new design or a modification of an existing product. Airline dissatisfaction with this proposal motivated Airbus to commit €4 billion Euros to a new airliner design. On 10 December 2004, Airbus shareholders, EADS and Bay Systems, approved the authorization to offer for the A350, expecting a 2010 service entry. Airbus then expected to win more than half of the 250 to 300 seat aircraft market, estimated at 3,100 aircraft overall over 20 years. Based on the A330, 
The 245-seat A35800 was to fly over an 8,600 miles or 15,900 kilometers range, and the 285-seat A35900 over a 7,500 NMI 13,900 kilometers range. Fuel efficiency would improve by over 10% with a mostly carbon fiber reinforced polymer wing and initial General Electric Gen 72A1 engines before offering a choice of power plant. It had a standard fuselage cross section with the A330 and a new horizontal stabilizer. On 13 June 2005, at the Paris Air Show, Middle Eastern carrier Qatar Airways announced that they had placed an order for 60 A350s. In September 2006, the airline signed a memorandum of understanding with General Electric or GE to launch the GE NX-1 A72 engine for the aircraft. Emirates sought a more improved design and decided against ordering the initial version of the A350. On 6 October 2005, the program's industrial launch was announced with an estimated development cost of around 3.5 billion euros. The A350 was initially planned to be a 250 to 300 seat twin engine wide body aircraft derived from the existing A330's design. Under this plan, the A350 would have modified wings and new engines while sharing the A330's fuselage cross section. For this design, the fuselage consisted primarily of aluminum lithium rather than the carbon fiber reinforced polymer or CFRP fuselage on the Boeing 787. The A350 would see entry in two versions, the A350-800 with an 8,800 NMI or 16,300 km range with a typical passenger capacity of 253 in a three-class configuration, and the A350-900 with 7,500 nanometers or 13,900 km range and a 300-seat three-class configuration. The A350 was designed to direct the Boeing 787-9 and 777-200ER. The original A350 design was publicly criticized by two of Airbus's largest customers, International Lease Finance Corporation or ILFC and GE Capital Aviation Services or GECAS. On 28 March 2006, ILFC President Stephen F. Advar Hazi urged Airbus to pursue a clean sheet design or risk losing market share to Boeing and branded Airbus's strategy as a band aid reaction to the 787 a sentiment echoed by GECAS President Henry Hubschman. In April 2006, while reviewing bids for the Boeing 787 and A350, CEO of Singapore Airlines or Sia Chu Chun Seng, commented that, having gone through the trouble of designing a new wing, tail, cockpit, dot dot, Airbus should have gone the whole hog and designed a new fuselage. Airbus responded that they were considering A350 improvements to satisfy customer demands. Airbus's then CEO Gustav Humbert stated, Our strategy isn't driven by the needs of the next one or two campaigns, but rather by a long-term view of the market and our ability to deliver on our promises. As major airlines such as Qantas and Singapore Airlines selected the 787 over the A350, Humbert tasked an engineering team to produce new alternative designs. One such proposal, known internally as 1D, formed the basis of the A350 redesign. Redesign and launch of Airbus A350. On 14 July 2006, during the Farnborough International Airshow, the redesigned aircraft was designated A350XWB, or extra wide body. Within four days, Singapore Airlines agreed to order 20 A350XWBs with options for another 20 A350XWBs. The proposed A350 was a new design, including a broader fuselage cross-section, 
allowing seating arrangements ranging from an 8 abreast low density premium economy layout to a 10 abreast high density seating configuration for a maximum seating capacity of 440 to 475 depending on variant. The A330 and previous iterations of the A350 would only accommodate a maximum of 8 seats per row. The 787 is typically configured for 9 seats per row. The 777 accommodates 9 or 10 seats per row, with more than half of recent 777s being configured in a 10 abreast layout that will come standard on the 777X. The A350 cabin is 12.7 cm or 5.0 in wider of the eye level of a seated passenger than the 787's cabin, and 28 cm or 11 in narrower than the Boeing 777's cabin or see the wide body aircraft comparison of cabin widths and seating. All A350 passenger models have a range of at least 8,000 nanometers or 14,816 km. The redesigned composite fuselage allows for higher cabin pressure and humidity and lower maintenance costs. On 1 December 2006, the Airbus Board of Directors approved the industrial launch of the A350-800, minus 900, and 1000 variants. The delayed launch decision resulted from delays to the Airbus A380 and discussions on funding development. EADS CEO Thomas Enders stated that the A350 program was uncertain, citing EADS, Airbus's stretched resources. However, program costs are to be borne mainly from cash flow. The first delivery for the A350-900 was scheduled for mid-2013, with the minus 800 and minus 1000 following on 12 and 24 months later, respectively. New technical details of the A350XWB were revealed at a press conference in December 2006. Chief Operating Officer John Leahy indicated existing A350 contracts were being renegotiated due to price increases compared to the original A350s contracted. On 4 January 2007, Pegasus Aviation Finance Company placed the first firm order for the A350XWB with two aircraft. The design change imposed a two-year delay into the original timetable. It increased development costs from US$5.3 billion United States dollars or €5.5 billion Euros to approximately US$10 billion United States dollars or US$9.7 billion. Euros. Reuters estimated the A350's total development cost at US$15 billion United States dollars or €12 billion Euros or £10 billion. Pounds. The original mid-2013 delivery date of the A350 was changed. A longer-than-anticipated development forced Airbus to delay the aircraft's final assembly and the first flight to the third quarter of 2012 and second quarter of 2013, respectively. As a result, the flight test schedule was compressed from the original 15 months to 12 months. A350 program chief Didier Evrard stressed that delays only affected the A350-900 while the minus 800 and minus 1000 plans remained unchanged. The design phase of Airbus A350. A plan of the A350XWB's new nose and general arrangement inside the forward fuselage Airbus suggested that Boeing's use of composite materials for the 787 fuselages was premature. The new A350XWB features large carbon fiber panels for the main fuselage skin. After facing criticism for maintenance costs, Airbus confirmed in early September 2007 the adoption of composite fuselage frames for the aircraft structure. The composite frames would feature aluminum strips to ensure the electrical continuity of the fuselage for dissipating lightning strikes. Airbus used a complete mock-up fuselage to develop the wiring, a different approach from the A380. The wiring was all done on computers. In 2006, Airbus confirmed the development of an entire bleed air system on the A350 instead of the 787's bloodless configuration. 
Rolls-Royce agreed with Airbus to supply a new variant of the Trent turbofan engine for the A350XWB, named Trent XWB. In 2010, after low-speed wind tunnel tests, Airbus finalized the static thrust at sea level for all three proposed variants to the 74,000 to 94,000 pounds or 330 to 420 kilonewtons range. GE stated it would not offer the GP7000 engine on the aircraft and the previous contracts for the gen on the original A350 did not apply to the XWB. Engine Alliance partner Pratt & Whitney seemed to be unaligned with GE on this, having publicly stated that it was looking at an advanced derivative of the GP7000. In April 2007, Former Airbus CEO Louis Galois held direct talks with GE management over developing a Gen variant for the A350XWB. In June 2007, John Leahy indicated that the A350XWB would not feature the Gen engine, saying that Airbus wanted GE to offer a more efficient version for the airliner. Since then, the largest GE engines operators, Emirates, US Airways, Hawaiian Airlines, and ILFC, have selected the Trent XWB for their A350 orders. In May 2009, GE said that if it were to reach a deal with Airbus to offer the current 787 optimized gen for the A350, it would only power the minus 800 and minus 900 variants. GE believed it could offer a product that outperforms the Trent 1000 and Trent XWB but was reluctant to support an aircraft competing directly with its GE 90 to 115 B powered 777 variants. In January 2008, French-based Thales Group won a 2.9 billion United States dollars or 2 billion euros 20-year contract to supply avionics and navigation equipment for the A350XWB, beating Honeywell and Rockwell Collins. US-based Rockwell Collins and Moog Inc. provided horizontal stabilizer actuator and primary flight control actuation, respectively. The flight management system incorporated several new safety features. Regarding cabin ergonomics and entertainment, in 2006, Airbus signed a firm contract with BMW to develop an interior concept for the original A350. On 4 February 2010, Airbus signed a contract with Panasonic Avionics Corporation to deliver in-flight entertainment and communication or IFEC systems for the Airbus A350XWB. Testing and certification of Airbus A350. The first Trent engine test was made on 14 June 2010. The Trent XWB's flight test program began to use on the A380 development aircraft in early 2011, ahead of engine certification in late 2011. On 2 June 2013, the Trent XWB engines were powered up on the A350 for the first time. Airbus confirmed that the flight test program would last 12 months and use five test aircraft. The A350's maiden flight took place on 14 June 2013 from the Toulouse to Blagnac Airport. Airbus's chief test pilot said, It just seemed happy in the air. Dot all the things we were testing had no major issues at all. It flew for four hours, reaching Mach 0 0.8 at 25,000 feet after retracting the landing gear and starting a 2500H flight test campaign. Costs for developing the aircraft were estimated at 11 billion euros or 15 billion United States dollars or 9.5 billion pounds in June 2013. A350XWB MSN. Two underwent two and a half weeks of climatic tests in the unique McKinley Climatic Laboratory at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, in May 2014 and was subjected to multiple climatic and humidity settings from a high of 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit to as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius or minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The A350 received type certification from the European Aviation Safety Agency or ASA on 30 September 2014. 
On 15 October 2014, ASA approved the A350-900 for ETOPS 370, allowing it to fly more than six hours on one engine and making it the first airliner approved for ETOPS beyond 180 minutes before entry into service. Later that month, Airbus received regulatory approval for a common type rating for pilot training between the A350XWB and A330. On 12 November 2014, the A350 received certification from the FAA. On 1 August 2017, the ASA issued an airworthiness directive mandating operators to power cycle or reset early A350-900s before 149 hours of continuous power on time, reissued in July 2019. Production of Airbus A350 In 2008, Airbus planned to start cabin furnishing early in parallel with final assembly to cut production time in half. The A350XWB production program sees extensive international collaboration and investments in new facilities. Airbus constructed 10 new factories in Western Europe and the US, with extensions carried out on three different sites. Among the new buildings was a 570 million pounds or 760 million United States dollars or 745 million euros composite facility in Broughton, Wales, which would be responsible for the wings. In June 2009, the National Assembly for Wales announced a £28 million grant to provide a training centre, production jobs, and money toward the new production centre. Airbus manufactured the first structural component in December 2009. Production of the first fuselage barrel began in late 2010 at its production plant in Illescas, Spain. The first A350-900 center wing box was set to start in August 2010. The new composite rudder plant in China opened in early 2011. The forward fuselage of the first A350 was delivered to the final assembly plant in Toulouse on 29 December 2011. The final assembly of the first A350 static test model was started on 5 April 2012. The final assembly of the prototype, A350, was completed in December 2012. In 2018, the unit cost of the A350-900 was US$317.4 million, United States dollars, and the A350-1000 was US$366.5 million. United States dollars. The production rate was expected to rise from three aircraft per month in early 2015 to five at the end of 2015 and would ramp to 10 aircraft per month by 2018. In 2015, 17 planes would be delivered, and the initial dispatch reliability was 98%. Airbus announced plans to increase its production rate from 10 monthly in 2018 to 13 monthly from 2019 and 6A330 are produced monthly. Around 90 deliveries were expected for 2018, with 15% or approximately equals 14 units being a 350-1000 variants. That year, 93 aircraft were delivered, three more than expected. In 2019, Airbus delivered 112 A350s at a rate of 10 per month. We're going to keep the rate around 9 to 10 per month to reflect softer demand for widebodies, as the backlog reached 579 minus or 5.2 years of production at a constant rate. The coronavirus crisis caused the decrease of the A350 output from 9.5 per month to 6 per month since April 2020. Entry into service of Airbus A350. In June 2011, the A350-900 was scheduled to enter service in the first half of 2014, with the minus 800 to enter service in mid-2016 and the minus 1000 in 2017. In July 2012, Airbus delayed the 900's introduction by three months to the second half of 2014. 
The delivery to launch customer Qatar Airways took place on the 22nd of December 2014. The first commercial flight was made on the 15th of January 2015 between Doha and Frankfurt. The first A350-1000 was assembled in 2016 and had its first flight on 24 November 2016. The aircraft was then delivered on 20 February 2018 to Qatar Airways, which had also been the launch operator of the Minus 900, and entered the commercial service with a flight from Doha to London on 24 February 2018 undeveloped shorter A350-800. The 60.45 meters or 198.3 feet long A350-800 was designed to seat 276 passengers in a typical three-class configuration with a range of 8,245 nanometers or 15,270 kilometers with an MTOW of 259T or 571,000 pounds. In January 2010, Airbus opted to develop the Minus 800 as a shrink of the baseline Minus 900 to simplify development and increase its payload by 3T or 6,600 pounds or its range by 250 nmi or 460 kilometers, but this led to a fuel burn penalty of a couple of percent, according to John Leahy. The previously planned optimization to the structure and landing gear was not beneficial enough against better commonality and maximum takeoff weight increase by 11T from 248T. The 800's fuselage is 10 frames shorter or 6 forward and 4 aft of wing than the Minus 900 aircraft. It was designed to supplement the Airbus A330-200 long-range twin. Airbus planned to decrease structural weight in the Minus 800 as development continued, which should have been around airframe 20. While its backlog reached 182 in mid-2008, it diminished since 2010 as customers switched to the larger Minus 900. After launching the Airbus A330neo at the 2014 Farnborough Airshow, Airbus dropped the A350-800, with its CEO Fabrice Bregier saying, I believe all of our customers will either convert to the A350-900 or the A330neo. He later confirmed at a September 2014 press conference that development of the A350-800 had been cancelled. There were 16 orders left for the Minus 800 since Yemeni switched to the Minus 900 and Hawaiian Airlines moved to the A330neo in December 2014. 8 for Aeroflot and 8 for Asiana Airlines, both also having orders for the Minus 900. In January 2017, Aeroflot and Airbus announced their Minus 800 charges, leaving Asiana Airlines as the only customer for the variant. After the negotiation between Airbus and Asiana Airlines, Asiana converted rankings of 8 A350-800s and 1 A350-1000 to 9 A350-900s. Lengthier A350-1000. In 2011, Airbus redesigned the A350-1000 with higher weights and a more powerful engine variant to provide more range for trans-Pacific operations. This boosted its appeal to Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines, which were committed to purchasing 20 Boeing 777-9s. United Airlines considered Boeing 777-300ers to replace its 747-400s. Emirates was disappointed with the changes and cancelled its order for 50 A350-900s and 20 A350-1000s instead of changing the whole order to the larger variant. The assembly of the first fuselage significant components started in September 2015. In February 2016, the final assembly started at the A350 final assembly line in Toulouse. Three flight test aircraft were planned, with entry into service scheduled for mid-2017. The first aircraft completed its body joint on 15 April 2016. Its maiden flight took place on 24 November 2016. 
The A350-1000 flight test program planned for 1,600 flight hours, 600 hours on the first aircraft, MSN-59, for the flight envelope, systems, and power plant checks. 500 hours on MSN-71 for cold and warm campaigns, landing gear checks, and high altitude tests, and 500 hours on MSN-65 for route proving and ETOPS assessment, with an interior layout for cabin development and certification. In cruise at max 0.854 or 911.9 km per hour, 492.4 knots and 35,000 feet, its fuel flow at 259T or 571,000 pounds is 6.8T or 15,000 pounds per hour within a 5,400 nautical miles or 10,000 kilometers, 11 and a half hours early long test flight. Flight tests allowed raising the MTOW from 308 to 316T or 679,000 to 697,000 pounds. The AT or 18,000 pounds increase giving 450 miles or 830 kilometers more range. Airbus then completed functional and reliability testing. Type certification was awarded by ASA on 21 November 2017, along with FAA certification. The first serial unit was on the final assembly line in early December. After its maiden flight on 7 December, delivery to launch customer Qatar Airways slipped to early 2018. The delay was due to issues with the business class seat installation. It was delivered on 20 February and entered commercial service on Qatar Airways Doha to London Heathrow route on 24 February. Likely a further stretch. Airbus has explored the possibility of a further stretch offering 45 more seats. A potential 4 meters stretch would remain within the exit limit of four-door pairs. A modest MTOW increase from 308T to 319T would need only 3% more thrust within the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 capabilities. It would allow a 14,100 km or 7,600 miles range to compete with the 777-9S capabilities. This variant replaced the 747 to 400, tentatively the A350, 8000, 2000, or 1100. Within the June 2016 Airbus Innovation Days, Chief Commercial Officer John Leahy was concerned about a 400-seat market besides the Boeing 747 to 8 and the 777 to 9. Chief Executive Fabrice Bregier feared that such an aircraft could cannibalize the 1000. The potential 79 meters long or 258 feet airplane was competing against a hypothetical 777 10X for Singapore Airlines. The concept was shelved at the 2017 Paris Air Show for lacking market appeal. In January 2018, Fabrice Bregier focused on enhancing the A350-901000 to capture potential before 2022-2023, when it will be possible to stretch the A350 with a new engine generation. New engine option of Airbus A350. By November 2018, Airbus hired Toulouse and Madrid to develop a re-engined A350neo. Although its launch is not guaranteed, it would be delivered in the mid-2020s, after the A321XLR and a stretched A320neo, plus, potentially competing with the Boeing new midsize airplane. Service entry would be determined by ultra-high bypass ratio engine developments pursued by Pratt & Whitney, testing its geared turbofan upgrade, Safran aircraft engines, ground testing a demonstrator from 2021, and Rolls-Royce, targeting a 2025 ultra-fine service entry. The production target is a monthly rate of 20 A350neos, up from 10. In November 2019, General Electric was offering an advanced GENX-1 variant with a bleed-air system and improvements from the GE9X, 
developed for the delayed Boeing 777X, to power a proposed A350neo from the mid-2020s. Design. Airbus expected 10% lower airframe maintenance than the original A350 design and 14% lower empty seat weight than the Boeing 777. Design freeze for the A350-900 was achieved in December 2008. The airframe is made out of 53% composites. CFRP for the empennage or vertical and horizontal tailplanes, the wing or center and outer box including covers, stringers, and spars, and fuselage or keel beam, rear fuselage, skin, and frame, 19% aluminum and aluminum to lithium alloy for ribs, floor beams, and gear bays, 14% titanium for landing gears, pylons, and attachments, 6% steel, and 8% miscellaneous. The A350's competitor, the Boeing 787, is 50% composites, 20% aluminum, 15% titanium, 10% steel, and 5% other. Now we talk about, the fuselage of the Airbus A350. The A350 features a new composite fuselage with a constant width from door 1 to door 4, unlike previous Airbus aircraft, to provide maximum usable volume. The double lobe or ovoid fuselage cross-section has a maximum outer diameter of 5.97 meters or 19.6 feet, compared to 5.64 meters or 18.5 feet for the A330-A340. The cabin's internal width is 5.61 meters or 18.4 feet at armrest level compared to 5.49 meters or 18.0 feet in the Boeing 787 and 5.87 meters or 19.3 feet in the Boeing 777. It allows for an 8 abreast 2 to 4 to 2 arrangement in a premium economy layout. The seats are 49.5 cm or 19.5 wide between 5 cm or 2.0 in wide armrests. Airbus states that the seat will be 1.3 cm or 0.5 in wider than a 787 seat in the equivalent configuration. In the 9 abreast, 3 to 3 to 3 standard economy layout, the A350 seat will be 45 cm or 18 in wide. 1.27 cm or 0.5 in wider than a seat in the equivalent layout in the 787, and 3.9 cm or 1.5 in wider than a seat in the equivalent A330 design. The current 777 and future derivatives have 1.27 cm or 0.5 in greater seat width than the A350 in a 9 abreast configuration. The 10 abreast seating on the A350 is similar to a 9 abreast configuration on the A330, with a seat width of 41.65 cm or 16.4 in. Overall, the A350 gives passengers more headroom, larger overhead storage space, and broader panoramic windows than current Airbus models. The A350 nose section is derived from the A380 with a forward-mounted nose gear bay and a six-panel flight deck windscreen. This differs substantially from the four-window arrangements in the original design. The new nose, made of aluminum, improves aerodynamics, enables overhead crew rest areas to be installed further forward, and eliminates passenger cabin encroachment. The new windscreen has been revised to improve vision by reducing the width of the center post. The upper shell radius of the nose section has been increased. Now we talk about, the wing of the Airbus A350. The A350 features new composite wings with a wingspan common to the proposed variants. Its 64.75 meters or 212.4 feet wingspan stays within the same ICAO Aerodrome Reference Code E65 meters limit as the A330, A340 and the Boeing 777. The A350's wing has a 31.9 degrees sweep angle for a Mach 0.85 cruise speed and has a maximum operating speed of Mach 0.89. 
The 900 branch covers a 442 square meters or 4,760 square feet area. This is between the 436.8 square meters or 4,702 square feet wing of the current Boeing 777200LR. 300ER and the 466.8 square meters or 5,025 square feet wing of the in-development Boeing 777X. However, Boeing and Airbus do not use the exact measurement. The A350-1000 wing is 22.3 square meters or 240 square feet larger through a 30 centimeters or 12 in extension to the inboard sections of the fixed trailing edge. A new trailing edge high lift device has been adopted with an advanced dropped hinge flap similar to the A380, which permits the gap between the trailing edge and the flap to be closed with the spoiler. It is a little morphing wing with adaptive features for continuously optimizing the wing loading to reduce fuel burn, variable camber for longitudinal load control where inboard and outboard flaps deflect together and differential flaps setting for lateral load control inboard and outboard flaps deflect differentially. The manufacturer has extensively used computational fluid dynamics and conducted more than 4,000 hours of low and high-speed wind tunnel testing to refine the aerodynamic design. The final configuration of the wing and winglet was achieved for the maturity gate 5 inches on 17 December 2008. The wingtip device curves upwards over the last 4.4 meters or 14 feet. The wings are produced in the new 400 million pounds or 641 million United States dollars, 46,000 square meters or 500,000 square featuring North Factory at Airbus Broughton, employing 650 workers, in a specialist facility constructed with 29 million pounds of support from the Welsh government. Undercarriage. Airbus adopted a new philosophy for attaching the A350's main undercarriage as part of the switch to a composite wing structure. Each main undercarriage leg is attached to the rear wing spar forward and to a gear beam aft, which itself is attached to the wing and the fuselage. A double side stay configuration has been adopted to help reduce the loads further into the wing. This solution resembles the design of the Vickers VC-10. Airbus devised a three-pronged main undercarriage design philosophy encompassing four- and six-wheel bogies to stay within pavement loading limits. The A350-900 has four-wheel bogies in a 4.1 meters or 13 feet long bay. The higher weight variant, the A350-1000, uses a six-wheel bogey with a 4.7 meters or 15 feet undercarriage bay. French-based Messier Doughty provides the main undercarriage for the minus 900 variant, with titanium forgings from Cabelco, and UTC Aerospace Systems supplies the minus 1000 variant. Liebherr Aerospace provides the nose gear. The A350-900 has four-wheel leading equipment for a 280T or 620,000 pounds MTOW. Now we talk about, systems of the Airbus A350. Honeywell supplies its 1,700 horsepower or 1,300 kilowatts HGT 1700 auxiliary power unit with 10% greater power density than the TPE 331 from which it is developed and the air management system, the bleed air, environmental control, cabin pressure control, and supplemental cooling systems. Airbus says that the new design provides a better cabin atmosphere with 20% humidity, a typical cabin altitude at or below 6,000 feet or 1,800 meters, and an airflow management system that adapts cabin airflow to passenger load with draft-free air circulation. The Ram air turbine, capable of generating 100 kV ampere, is supplied by Hamilton Sunstrand and located on the lower surface of the fuselage. In light of the 787 Dreamliner battery problems, in February 2013, Airbus decided to revert from lithium-ion to the proven nickel-cadmium technology. However, the flight test program will continue with the lithium-ion battery systems.
In late 2015, A350X WBMSN 24 was delivered with 80 kilograms or 176 pounds lighter SAFT Li-ion batteries. In June 2017, 50 A350s were flying with them and benefiting from a two-year maintenance schedule instead of NISID's four to six months. Parker Hannafin supplies the complete fuel package, inerting system, fuel measurement and management systems, mechanical equipment, and fuel pumps. The fuel tank inerting system features air separation modules to generate nitrogen-enriched air to reduce the flammability of fuel vapor in the tanks. Parker also provides hydraulic power generation and distribution systems, reservoirs, manifolds, accumulators, thermal control, isolation, software, and a new engine and electric motor-driven pump designs. Parker estimates the contracts will generate more than US$2 billion United States dollars in revenues over the life of the program. Cockpit and Avionics the revised design of the A350XWB's glass cockpit dropped the A380 size display and adopted 38 cm or 15 in liquid crystal display screens. The new six-screen configuration includes two central displays mounted above the other or the lower one above the thrust levers. A single or for each pilot primary flight, navigation display, with an adjacent onboard information system screen. Airbus says the cockpit design allows for future advances in navigation technology to be placed on the displays plus gives flexibility and capacity to upload new software and combine data from multiple sources and sensors for flight management and aircraft systems control. A head-up display is also present in the cockpit. Avionics further developed the integrated modular avionics or IMA concept found on the A380. The A350's IMA will manage up to 40 functions versus 23 functions for the A380, such as the undercarriage, fuel, pneumatics, cabin environmental systems, and fire detection. Airbus stated that the benefits include reduced maintenance and lower weight because the IMA replaces multiple processes and LRUs with around 50% fewer standard computer modules known as line replaceable modules. The IMA runs on a 100 megabits per second network based on the AFDX standard, as employed in the A380, in place of the architecture used on the A330, A340. Now we talk about, propulsion of the Airbus A350. In 2005, GE was the launch engine of the original A350, aiming for 2010 deliveries, while Rolls-Royce offered its Trent 1700. For the updated A350XWB, GE offered an 87,000 lbf or 390 kN GENX 3A87 for the A350-8900, but not a higher thrust version needed for the A350-1000, which competes with the longer range 777 powered exclusively with the GE 90 to 115B. In December 2006, Rolls-Royce was selected for the A350XWB launch engine. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB features a 118 in or 300 cm fan disc diameter, and the design is based on the advanced developments of the Airbus A380 Trent 900 and the Boeing 787 Trent 1000. It has four thrust levels to power the A350 variants, a 75,000 lbf or 330 kN and 79,000 lbf or 350 kN for the regional variants of the A350-900 while the baseline A350-900 has the standard 84,000 lbf or 370 kN and a 97,000 lbf or 430 kN for the A350-1000. The higher thrust version will have some modifications to the fan module. It will be the same diameter but will run slightly faster and have a new fan blade design, and run at increased temperatures allowed by new materials technologies from Rolls-Royce's research. The Trent XWB may also benefit from the next generation reduced acoustic mode scattering engine duct system or Ramsey's, 
an auditory quieting engine nacelle intake, and a carry-on design of the Airbus's Zero Splices intake liner developed for the A380. A hot and high rating option for Middle Eastern customers, Qatar Airways, Emirates, and Etihad Airways keep its thrust available at higher temperatures and altitudes. Airbus aimed to certify the A350 with 350-minute ETOPS capability on entry into service. That could reach 420 minutes later, although Airbus achieved a 370-minute ETOPS rating on 15 October 2014, covering 99.7% of the Earth's surface. Engine thrust reverses and nacelles are supplied by US-based UTC Aerospace Systems. Now we talk about the operational history of the Airbus A350. One year after its introduction, the A350 fleet had accumulated 3,000 flight cycles and around 16,000 block hours. Average daily usage by first customers was 11.4 hours with flights averaging 5.2 hours, which are under the aircraft's capabilities and reflect both short flights within the schedules of Qatar Airways and Vietnam Airlines, as well as flight crew proficiency training that is typical of early use and is accomplished on short-haul flights. Finnair was operating the A350 at very high rates, 15 flight hours per day for Beijing, 18 hours for Shanghai, and 20 hours for Bangkok. This may have accelerated the retirement of the Airbus A340. In service, problems occurred in three areas. The onboard maintenance, repair, overhaul network needed software improvements. Airbus issued service bulletins regarding onboard equipment and removed galley inserts or coffee makers toaster ovens because of leaks. Airbus had to address spurious overheating warnings in the bleed air system by retrofitting an original connector with a gold-plated connector. Airbus targeted a 98.5% dependability by the end of 2016 and to match the mature A330 reliability by early 2019. By the end of May 2016, the A350 fleet had flown 55,200 hours over 9,400 cycles at a 97.8% operational reliability in three months. Qatar Airways Adelaide to Doha was the longest operated sector at 13.8 hours for 6,120 miles or 11,334 kilometers. 45% of flights were under 3,000 nmi or 5,556 km, 16% over 5,000 nmi or 9,260 km, and 39% in between. The average flight was 6.8 hours. The longest average was 9.6 hours by TAM Airlines, and the shortest was 2.1 hours by Cathay Pacific. It seats from 253 seats for Singapore Airlines to 348 seats for TAM Airlines, with a 30 to 46 seat business class and a 211 to 318 seat economy class, often including a premium economy. A total of 49 A350s were delivered to customers in 2016. It was also planned that the monthly rate would grow to 10 by the end of 2018 which was eventually achieved in 2019 when Airbus delivered 112 aircraft for 11 months. In January 2017, two years after its introduction, 62 aircraft were in service with 10 airlines. They had accumulated 25,000 flights over 154,000 hours with average daily utilization of 12.5 hours. They transported 6 million passengers with a 98.7% operational reliability. Zodiac Aerospace encountered production difficulties with business class seats in their Texas and California factories. After a year, Cathay Pacific experienced cosmetic quality issues and upgraded or replaced the seats for the earliest cabins. In 2017, Average test flights before delivery decreased to 4.1 from 12 in 2014, with an average delay down to 25 days from 68. Its reliability was 97.2% in 2015, 
98.3% in 2016, and 98.8% in June 2017, just behind its 99% target for 2017. In June 2017, after 30 months in commercial operation, 88 350s were in service with 12 operators, the largest being Qatar Airways with 17 and 13 each at Cathay Pacific and Singapore Airlines or SEA. The fleet average block time or time between pushback and destination gate arrival was 7.2 hours with 53% below 3000 nmi or 5556 km, 16% over 5000 nmi or 9260 km, and 31% in between. LATAM Airlines had the longest average sector at 10.7 hours, and Asiana had the shortest at 3.8 hours. Singapore Airlines operated the longest leg, from Singapore to San Francisco 7,340 miles or 13,594 kilometers. The shortest leg, Singapore to Kuala Lumpur 160 nmi or 296 kilometers. Seating varied from 253 for Singapore Airlines to 389 for Air Caribs, with most between 280 and 320. In August 2021, a dispute arose between Airbus and Qatar Airways, the largest customer and the second largest operator of the A350. When several A350s were sent in for repainting to promote the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, it was discovered that their fuselages had suffered an unusual amount of degradation despite only three to six years of service. The airplanes were grounded until the root cause could be determined. The airline would not accept future deliveries until the problem is resolved. In contrast, Singapore Airlines, the largest A350 operator, had not detected such problems with its fleet and continued to operate it. The European regulator, ASA, would not take any actions over the findings since it had not indicated any paint degradation that could affect the aircraft's structure nor introduce other risks. In November 2021, an investigation by Reuters found that Finnair, Cathay Pacific, Etihad, Lufthansa, and Air France had also raised concerns with Airbus about the paint and complained of paint damage as early as 2016. On 20 December 2021, Airbus received a formal legal claim in the English courts filed by Qatar Airways concerning the degradation of surface and paint on certain of the airline's A350 aircraft. As of December 2021, the global A350 fleet had three years average aircraft age, had completed more than 720,000 flights on more than 800 routes, and had carried 185 million passengers since its entry into service, the fleet had 99.5% operational reliability in the last three months. Now we talk about, variants of the Airbus A350. The three primary variants of the A350 were launched in 2006, with entry into service planned for 2013. At the 2011 Paris Air Show, Airbus postponed the access into the A350-1000 by two years to mid-2017. In July 2012, the A350's entry into service was delayed to the second half of 2014, before the minus 900 began service on 15 January 2015. In October 2012, the minus 800 was due to enter service in mid-2016, but its development was cancelled in September 2014. The A350 is also offered as the ACJ350 corporate jet by Airbus Corporate Jets or ACJ, offering a 20,000 km or 10,800 nmi range for 25 passengers for the minus 900 derivative. Now we talk about A350-900. The A350-900 is the first A350 model, it has an MTOW of 280 tons or 620,000 pounds, typically seats 325 passengers, and has a range of 8,100 nanometers or 15,000 kilometers. Airbus says that per seat, 
The Boeing 777-200ER should have a 16% heavier manufacturer's empty weight, a 30% higher block fuel consumption, and 25% higher cash operating costs than the A350-900. The minus 900 is designed to compete with the Boeing 777 and 787 or 777 to 200 er LR and Boeing 787 to 10 while replacing the Airbus A340-300 and A340-4500. A proposed A350-900R extended range variant featured the higher engine thrust, strengthened structure, and landing gear of the 308 tons or 679,000 pounds MTOW-1000 to give a further 800 nmi or 1,500 km range. Philippine Airlines or PAL will replace its A340-300 with an A350-900HGW or, high gross weight, variant available from 2017. It will enable non-stop Manila New York City flights without payload limitations in either direction, a 7,404 NMI or 13,712 km flight. The PAL version will have 278 tons or 613,000 pounds MTOW. From 2020, the minus 900 will be proposed with the ULR's 280 tons or 620,000 pounds MTOW, up from the 268 tons or 591,000 pounds for the original weight variant and the certified 260, 272, and 275 tons or 573,000, 600,000, and 606,000 pounds variants, with the large fuel capacity. This will enable an 8,100 nmi or 15,000 km range with 325 seats in a three-class layout. In early November 2017, Emirates committed to purchasing 40 Boeing 787-10 aircraft before Airbus presented an updated A350-900 layout with the rear pressure bulkhead pushed back by 2.5 feet or 1 meter. After Emirates' Tim Clark was shown a 10 abreast economy cabin and galley changes, he said the minus 900 is more marketable as a result. The average lease rates of the first A350-900s produced in 2014 were $1.1 million per month, not including maintenance reserves amounting to $18 million after 10 to 12 years, and falling to $940,000 per month in 2018 while a new A350-900 is leased for $1.2 million per month and its interior can cost $12 million, 10% of the aircraft. By 2018, a 2014 build was valued at $108 million falling to $74.5 million by 2022, while a new build was valued at $148 million, a 6 plus 12 year check cost $3 million, and an engine overhauls $4 to 6.5 M. Now we talk about, ACJ350. Airbus corporate jet version of the A350, the ACJ350, is derived from the A350-900 ULR. As a result of the increased fuel capacity from the minus 900 ULR, the ACJ350 has a maximum range of 20,000 km or 10,800 nmi. The German Air Force is the first to receive the ACJ350, having ordered three aircraft to replace its two A340-300. A350 Regional After the Boeing 787-10 launch at the 2013 Paris Air Show, Airbus discussed with airlines a possible A350-900 Regional with a reduced MTOW of 250T or £550,000. Engine thrust would have been reduced to 70,000 to 75,000 pounds or 310 to 330 kilonewtons from the standard 85,000 lbf or 380 kilonewtons. 
the variant would have been optimized for routes up to 6,800 nmi or 12,600 km with seating for up to 360 passengers in a single-class layout. The A350 regional was expected to be ordered by Etihad Airways and Singapore Airlines. Since 2013, there has been no further announcement about this variant. Singapore Airlines selected an A350-900 version for medium haul use. Japan Airlines took delivery of a 369-seat A350-900 with a 217T or 478,000 pounds MTOW for its domestic market. The A350 type certificate data sheet includes MTOWs of 217, 235, 240, 250, 255, 260, 268, 272, 275, 277, 278 and 280 T. Now we talk about, A350 to 900 ULR. The MTOW of the ultra-long range 900 ULR has been increased to 280 T or 620,000 pounds. Its fuel capacity increased from 141,000 to 165,000 L or 37,000 to 44,000 US GAL within existing fuel tanks, enabling up to 19-hour flights with a 9,700 nmi or 18,000 km range. The MTOW is increased by 5 tons or 11,000 pounds from the certified 275 tons or 606,000 pounds variant. Because the A350-900's fuel consumption of 5.8 tons or 13,000 pounds per hour needs an additional 24 tons or 53,000 pounds of fuel to fly 19 hours instead of the standard 15 hours, the increased MTOW and lower payloads will enable the larger fuel capacity. Non-stop flights could last more than 20 hours. The first minus 900 ULR was rolled out without its engines in February 2018 for ground testing. Flight tests after engine installation checked the larger fuel capacity and measured the performance improvements from the extended winglets. It made its first flight on the 23rd of April 2018. Singapore Airlines, the launch customer, used its 7900 ULR aircraft on non-stop flights between Singapore and New York City and cities on the U.S. West Coast. Singapore Airlines seating ranges from 170 in primarily business class seating up to over 250 in mixed seating. The planes can be reconfigured. They will have two seating classes. The airline received its first 900 ULR on 23 September 2018, with 67 business class seats and 94 premium economy seats. On 12 October 2018, it landed the world's longest flight at Newark Liberty International Airport from Singapore Chungi after 17 hours and 52 minutes, covering 16,561 km or 8,942 nmi for 15,353 km or 8,290 nmi orthodromic distance. It burned 101.4 t or 224,000 pounds of fuel to cover the route in 17 h 22 minutes, an average of 5.8 tons per hour or 1.6 kilograms per second. At the 2015 Dubai Air Show, John Leahy noted the demand of the Middle Eastern Gulf Airlines for this variant. In February 2018, Qatar Airways stated its preference for the larger 1000, not needing the extra range of the 900 ULR. Compared to the standard minus 900, the 900 ULR additional value is likely around $2 million. Now we talk about, A350F. An A350-900 freighter was first mentioned in 2007, 
offering a similar capacity to the MD-11F with a range of 9,250 km or 5,000 miles, to be developed after the passenger version. In early 2020, Airbus was proposing an A350F before a potential launch. The proposed freighter would be slightly longer than the A350-900, and Airbus would need 50 orders to launch the $2 to $3 billion program. It would be 70.1 meters or 230 feet long and be powered by Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 engines. Airbus calls the version A350F. In July 2021, the Airbus board approved the freighter development. It is based on the minus 1000 version for a payload over 90 tons, and entry into service is targeted for 2025. The A350F would keep the A351319 TMTOW shortened but still 6.9 meters or 23 feet longer than the Boeing 777F for 10% larger freight volume at 695 cubic meters or 24,500 cubic feet compared to 633 cubic meters or 22,400 cubic feet for the 700 and 77F, similar to the Boeing 747-8F. With a main deck cargo door behind the wing and reinforced main deck aluminum floor beams, its 109T or 240,000 pounds payload is higher than the 103.7T or 229,000 pounds of the 777F. In comparison, its empty weight is 30T or 66,000 pounds lighter than the A350-1000, 20T or 44,000 pounds more lightweight than the 777F. At the November 2021 Dubai Air Show, US Lessor Air Lease Corporation became the launch customer with seven orders delivered around 2026, among other Airbus airliners. The launch operator of the A350F will be Singapore Airlines, who ordered seven aircraft at the 2022 Singapore Airshow, and deliveries will start from 2025. This is all about today, thank you for watching this video full if you want you can visit our channel and watch more videos. If you like this video, I will say again subscribe to this channel. Now we talk about, a 350-1000. The A350-1000 is the most significant variant of the A350 family at just under 74 meters or 243 feet in length. It seats 350 to 410 passengers in a typical three-class layout with a range of 8,700 nanometers or 16,100 kilometers. A9 abreast configuration is designed to replace the A340-600 and compete with the Boeing 777-300ER and 777-9. Airbus estimates a 366-seat, 1000 should have a 35 NNES or 77,000 pounds lighter operating empty weight than a 398-seat 777-9 a 15% lower trip cost, a 7% lower seat cost, and a 400 NMI or 740 km greater range. Compared to a Boeing 777-300ER with 360 seats, Airbus claims a 25% fuel burn per seat advantage for an A350-1000 with 369 seats. The 7 meters or 23 feet extension seats 40 more passengers with 40% more premium area. The 1000 can match the 40 more seats of the 777 to 9 by going 10 abreast but with diminished comfort. The A350-1000 has an 11 frame stretch over the minus 900 and a slightly larger wing than the minus 800 and 900 models with trailing edge extension increasing its area by 4%. This will extend the high lift devices and the ailerons, making the cord bigger by around 400 mm or 16 in, optimizing flap lift performance and cruise performance. The main landing gear is a six-wheel bogey instead of a 4-4 wheelie, 
put in one frame, more extended bay. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engine's thrust is augmented to 97,000 lbf or 430 kN. These and other engineering upgrades are necessary so that the minus 1000 model maintains range. Qatar Airways was the A350-1000 XWB launch operator in February 2018. It features an automatic emergency descent function to around 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters. It notifies air traffic control if the crew fails to respond to an alert, indicating possible incapacitation from depressurization. The avionics software adaptation is activated by pushing and pulling the button to avoid mistakes and could be retrofitted in the smaller minus 900. All performance targets have been met or exceeded, and it remains within their weight specification, unlike early minus 900s. Its essential 380 or 679,000 pounds MTOW was increased to 311 T or 686,000 pounds before offering a possible 316 T or 697,000 pounds version. Its 316 TMTOW appeared on 29 May 2018 to update its type certificate datasheet. This raised its range from 7,950 to 8,400 nanometers or 14,720 to 15,560 kilometers. A further MTOW increase by 3T or 6,600 pounds to a total of 319T or 703,000 pounds is under study to be available from 2020. It could be a response to Cantor's project Sunrise. Initial speculation suggested that the variant might be marketed as the A350-1000 ULR. However, the 1000 is not expected to share the minus 900 ULR's larger fuel tanks and other fuel system modifications. Airbus has stopped short of describing the most significant MTOW variant as a ULR model, despite the 8,700 nmi or 16,100 km range. In December 2019, Qantas tentatively chose the A350-1000 to operate their Project Sunrise routes before a final decision in March 2020 for up to 12 aircraft. In November 2019, maximum accommodation increased to 480 seats from 440 through installing new, Type A+, exits with a dual-lane evacuation slide. On 17 December 2021, French B took delivery of the first A350-1000 in this 480-seat configuration, leased by Air Lease Corporation and operated from Paris to Reunion Island, with 40 premium 440 economy seats.